All right, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, striking up the live stream on a Wednesday night. That is pretty typical, but this is a special, special Wednesday night because we're striking up the live stream, focusing on nothing but Florida State football for the next hour. So this is going to come your way each and every Wednesday. So this is not a one-time deal. Florida State fans, lock it in. College football fans that keep track of the big programs, lock it in. We're going to be here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. Many of you, I'm guessing, have not uh, come across me before. Look at the channel. Look at the videos. We've got over 7,000. We talk college football like nobody else each and every day with the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the nation, including analysis from myself. But without further ado, we are talking Florida State football tonight, and we will have on a number of guests, and I hate to call them guests. They're contributors. They're our team. We are a team uh, from now on in regards to talking Florida State football. So tonight it's going to be to your left. You got uh, big game James Coleman. You can catch him on fifth quarter college football. Big game James Coleman played at Florida State at the fullback position from 2002 to 2005. There in the middle, we've got uh, Logan Jason Parker. Actually, is in the middle there from Chop Chat. You can join him right there. And also Logan Robinson from Noel Game Day. How are you boys doing tonight? Good. I appreciate you guys jumping on board. You guys are going to make me look good each and every week with all your information and insight. Let me let me first. That's our job. You can, let me tell you congratulations on 10,000. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's huge. Yeah. And uh, what uh, gets us even more excited is that it took us about five years to get to 5,000. took us about eight months to get the other 5,000. So wow. we're picking up some steam. That's so appreciate awesome. that, Logan. Of course. Of All course. right. So let's lock it in on some Florida State football chat. I will be monitoring the live chat. I'll keep in mind uh, for everyone out there that we've got the super chat in play as well. All right. James, why don't we start with you? James is the, the longtime uh, old guard here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, so we're going to let him lead it off here. Um, your thoughts about uh, the offseason, how it's gone thus far in regards to coming off five and seven, and I know that I promised Logan at one point uh, during one of our records that I wouldn't mention five and seven too many more times uh, because it's a 2019, but whether it's recruiting spring practice, everything that's gone on since the boys left, less left the field against uh, Florida. Uh, your thoughts about how the offseason has gone? I mean, it was a crazy offseason. I mean, we got a new offensive coordinator now, new O-line coach. So pretty much all the woes and the things that people kind of complained about are a little bit like we tag fixed that. So, But the fan base really has – Oh, boy. James first is tapping out already. First one of the night. <laughs> there it is. James, we got you. You're looking good, but we can't hear you right now. Hopefully you come back for us. Logan, the off season in regards to coming off of the disappointing seven loss season, do you think uh, enough has happened in spring practice and on the recruiting path to get uh, the, the fans back into it? I think so. I think you focus starting off first with a little bit of leadership and the communication and, and fixed a lot of the organization problems that you saw last year. Uh, leadership starting off with James Blackman. Uh, I know me and Coleman went to go see him in practice. We see, saw him last year, too. Uh, he's the biggest leader on the team. Veterans will tell you that. Um, and that, I think that plays a huge role for a team that wants to go reach just a bowl game. Um, and, and then it goes on to Florida State's newest hires with Clements and Kendall Bryles on the offensive side. With And then also you got Ron Dugans from Miami, who's a talented wide receiver coach. Uh, but looking at Bryles and Clements, I think Clements is, is a huge hire for Florida State. Uh, he's a kind of guy that is more, I went to go watch him coach a little bit when we first went to the spring practice, but he's more of a quiet guy. Uh, but it seems like he's got the potential to bring these guys together. Um, and then also Kendall Bryles being that dude who's seems like he's going to try to make it a little bit more simple, which might help the speed in some case, but he's going to try to go even faster than Taggart had last year. So 
I, I think leadership wise and be, bringing this team more together connected, I think it was just dismantled in a lot of ways last year. Um, I, I, I do think having leadership all around is going to help this team. And there's some young cats too, from what I've heard that are uh, speaking up, which I think is huge. Cause we saw that in 2013, a lot of young guys spoke up. Um, and I think that should just continue uh, throughout the off season. So I think it's heading in the right direction. If you want to get to at least a bowl game. Yeah. Jason, everybody gets excited for college football, regardless of your team. But uh, when it's Florida state and you're coming off uh, two subpar seasons to this degree, uh, what's the fan base think? What do you think? Uh, do you have real optimism? I'm always the eternal optimist when it comes to Florida state. My big thing is I think people are finally starting to see that last year was not all Willie Taggart as far as going the five and seven. They're starting to see, okay, here were the problems that led into what took place last year. And I think you're finally starting to see people go, okay, yes, last year sucked, but let, let's go on. Let, like, like you said, let's move on to 2019. Let's focus there. You know, let's get back to the seven wins, eight wins, nine wins, you know, back to a bowl game. Hey, James, we'll give you another shot here. You with us? Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we got, James. Yeah, we I got you. I, work. Got I got my fingers crossed, James. All right. Oh, so just talk about that? Oh, Fire away. Pretty much, pretty much everything that these guys said. I mean, you saw that this was probably more of an apparition than it was what's the normal. And the fan base is – I mean, the, it's really recruiting is what shows it. Um, no five, For 5 and 17, we should not have – the class that we currently have with the momentum. Now there's some notable pieces with a lack of a, a a real pass rusher right now in recruiting and maybe some linemen that you would like to have that have gone off the board. But I think a lot of this stuff can change if, if they come out the gate winning. The biggest thing is that fans have got to stop complaining about 2018. 2018 has happened and it's gone. So there's nothing that we can do about it besides try to have a better 2019. But he made all the changes on offense that you could ask him to do now, and and you made some serious upgrades on defense. So now you just have to hope that everything clicks. Um, but I'm I, I'm with it, you know, especially when you're hearing some of the rumors by like guys like Pope Lucas coming in. Not say Pope Lucas coming in there being very vocal as a freshman. James Blackman being very vocal. Guys coming in talking about taking positions. I love it. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. We are monitoring the live chat. We've got 35 on the line right now. I expect that to grow into triple digits. So thanks so much for joining us on our inaugural show, talking Florida State football every Wednesday night here at Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. Lock it in 7 o'clock Eastern time. You guys had mentioned in our uh, Twitter chat that obviously in the last, what, four or five days, uh, we've got offensive lineman Landon Dickerson, a big transfer considering the offensive line woes, even going back to when this team was productive in 2015 and 16, uh, a number four rated offensive lineman, uh, a tackle, according to the 247 composite, Del Logan in 2016. Uh, your thoughts about whether this really has an impact? I think it help, uh, it's an impact depth wise. For production wise, we didn't see him play all that much. He wasn't out there. Uh, he's dealt with injuries uh, throughout his career at Florida State. I'm interested to see uh, who's willing to step up on that offensive line side with how Randy Clements is going to work it. I think there's going to be a lot of battles starting off in fall camp. Uh, and and just as a, a depth situation, uh, it, it switches some switches some things around. Some guys are going to have to start uh, competing early on. Um, but he, the thing is, he's re-entered it a second time. I think a lot of players after entering it uh, were kind of like, if, if you're not about it, then get out. And that and once he re-entered it again, uh, there was a true there was a true freshman that said something publicly about it, telling him, if you're not about staying at Florida State, get out. Uh, and I kind of like that if I'm a player or if I'm a fan of Florida State, because you know you want these players to listen to Taggart and, and believe in what he's saying, and and, and these true freshmen are, are are believing in it. So uh, just just as a depth wise, I think it's a it's a grunt to it, but uh, production wise, I don't think you miss a whole ton. 
So I'm going to lay some ground rules here. I don't want us to necessarily always go in order. You guys can mix it up a little bit and jump in on each other. If uh, somebody says something that uh, triggers something, we want this to be organic. At the same time, unfortunately, we're a little bit limited uh, by YouTube in terms of it being voice activated. So if two people are talking at the same time, it just activates to the microphone that's, that's in play. And you'll see the uh, camera switch. And basically, that's showing us that it's only recording and only... Uh, bringing the audio through on the person talking. So we can't talk over each other too much, but I want it to be a great conversation and uh, just getting things started. So for anybody who's just joining us right now, as the numbers continue to rise, remember that this uh, video will process and post right at uh, the end of the conversation. So you can catch it from the beginning each and every week. Uh, we got Logan Robinson on the line from uh, Noel Game Day. We got uh, Jason Parker from Chop Chat and Big Game James Coleman, fifth quarter college football. Uh, Jason and uh, James, I will let you two uh, chime in on the Landon Dickerson transfer if you want or whatever's on your mind. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we, we wrote something uh, last week about this on Chop Chat, basically saying what Lent, what has been talked about. If you're not a part of the program and James, like you said, James from playing, you know, when we were both in school, if you aren't all in on FSU football right now as a player, it's time to go. And we wrote this about Landon because, remember, he's done this once before and then he came back and now he's doing it again. At this point, and, and it's no disrespect because, you know, you came to FSU, we, re we respect everything you did. At this point, if you aren't fully committed, leave and do what's best for you. Go on to another program, you know, in North Carolina, somewhere close to where he's from, whatever. He's got to do what's best for him, but also FSU has to move on and if you're not 100% in with with the 2019 season for FSU, you know, you got to go separate ways. It's got to happen. Um, I mean, much disrespect coming from my way. I mean, he 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 is a bust. I mean, hopefully he can go somewhere else and perform better, but I mean, you was it a possible out of a possible 38 games he played 11? of which a, a significant portion he left early. Uh, I think right now it's just not the energy that we need. And now, granted, you know, injuries happen and you can't help it. But, you know, don't stick around and don't make it – don't – what some of the, the, the rumors and some of the things that don't kick – don't kick your way out. Like, don't do what Jimbo did. Like, that's where I have a problem. And, and I, that's why I say, like, with much disrespect intended, um, take your sorry ass on. I mean, you were expected to do something and you did not, and you didn't perform, which happens. And that's just kind of where, you, but you got a chance. You were afforded an opportunity to be a grad transfer. Tad could have pulled his scholarship in the spring, and this would have never, and this would have never got to this point. So I mean, he's got a. It's better ways to do it. Um, I I don't see some of the, the places, the landing spots that he's going. I don't know how he'll go there unless they inject him with some like Michael Jordan's um, magic juice from Space Jam or something like that. But this guy is, I mean, I mean, not a bad kid, but at the same time, it's time. We, the offensive line is known for being soft and, and weak minded. It is time to get some, some dogs in there. Hey, James, you touch upon something here that uh, we tap you on all the time, and I bring it up all the time. Obviously, your perspective was fan turned into player, turned into media analyst. It's an interesting uh, perspective that you have all the way through. Uh, what earns respect in the locker room? It's different for us as media or fans saying, hey, this guy's awesome. This guy rings up numbers, and they gain respect. Uh, that way, or he's got a big recruiting ranking or whatever the deal is. But inside the locker room, what is the thing that earns respect, loses respect? I mean, guys who show up to work and, um, and carry themselves a certain way. I mean, you don't have to be a vocal leader. Um, your leadership shows by showing up to workouts on time, pushing everybody in the, in the room, uh, playing on the field. Um, actually, to be honest, not even playing. Like James Blackman was a great example of being a leader last year. Did not play, but you never saw him pout. You never saw his head down. You always saw him encouraging everybody. So those are the things that um, that you want to see from out of um, from out of guys who who you expect production of. But the bigger than that is what you do on the field. Like you can complain about not playing. You can complain about the coaches. You can complain about other things. But at a certain point, it's the guys who who you gravitate toward 
who are about bump the coaches, I'm playing for the pride. I'm playing for the pride of my teammate to the person to the left and to my right. And when I when I'm looking at this young man here, I'm seeing a lot of oh, I'm gonna point the finger at why it didn't work to everybody else. I mean, mind you, this is the left tackle that was on that was that was on the field that completely missed Ronnie Harrison on the play that possibly ended DeAndre Francois's career. Not saying he did it on purpose, but what I'm saying is intrinsically you have to be able to look on the inside and you've got to become a dog yourself. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. We got Florida State uh, live discussion with you each and every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. From left to right at the bottom of your screen, if it reads similar to mine, big game James Coleman, fifth quarter college football. Logan Robinson on the other end from no game day right there in the middle is Jason Parker from Chop Chat. You can help us build the channel by uh, going down to the description section below of any of the videos. So go to the one below on this video, grab the link, uh, do your Amazon shopping using that link. It doesn't cost you an extra penny. You don't have to buy the products you see. Just do your regular Amazon shopping and help us build the channel. DeAndre Francois, he had to have gained a ton of respect, I would think, in regards to standing in the pocket, getting hit time and time again, getting off the deck and delivering comeback wins in that uh, 2016 season in particular, capped off by the Orange Bowl win by one point over Michigan. Uh, Logan, your thoughts about uh, DeAndre moving on to FAU, and it seems like a decent fit when you understand the personality of one Lane Kiffin. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm happy that he gets another opportunity. Um, I'm interested to see how focused he is down there um, in Boca. Uh, I think he's a, is a talented quarterback. Uh, some of the things with offensive line woes here in Tallahassee didn't help him all too much. As we uh, saw, uh, my man was getting hit about every drive, <laughs> it felt like. Uh, and I, I think it, this all depends on his focus and how he how he uh, presents himself down there, if he, if he can be a leader there for them. Uh, I think Lane Kiffin will work well with him on that, surprisingly. Uh, and just as, just as a, a guy alone, I'd, I'd like to see him kind of just focus on, on just performing with his teammates and getting connected with them. I, he's had a problem with that since he first started at Florida state. Um, he yeah, would have guys that are on his side and then the other guys that are not a lot of the younger guys weren't all too well on his side, um, in certain situations. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that he gets another opportunity uh, and I'm interested to see uh, how much potential he has there with that a FAU system and Lane Kiffin. And also there's they have a good amount of uh, a talent around them. And also uh, there's possibilities of even a, a former null and even another former null joining him with Amir Rasul and George Campbell, who which just broke today from 247 Sports that uh, George Campbell won't be going to Penn State, so he might be a good fit for FAU staying at home with uh, DeAndre. Hey, and just, and, uh, I was going to just touch base along, sure. going, going along with what Logan said about that. Something that got me with, with DeAndre, and, and I've been on DeAndre's side the entire time here, is that, and, and you, you read all the stuff about him going to FAU as a graduate walk-on. I mean, I feel like FAU is almost a last resort for him like this was the option this was the one option for him was to go to FAU so I feel like I feel like that's going to be a great move for him in the sense of a you've got that experience of two years starting for a power five program at FSU you go down to FAU I really can see great things for him in Boca I'm you know obviously I'm not saying they're going to be you know in the in a New Year's six bowl game but I can easily see him leading an FAU team to a 10 win season this coming year in 2019. I mean, sometimes a change of scenery is the best thing that you can do. I mean, um, I, I appreciate him graduating, helping the APR. Um, I, I think he's – like Logan brought it up, it's focus. And he's going to have to buy into the system and he's going to have to do what he's coached to do because um, we can talk about all the off-the-field things that Lane Kiffin does, but Lane Kiffin is a offensive guru. He know like, you, you do it the way he drew it up. You don't do it your own way. So one of the things I used to always joke about, like if you're gonna, if you're supposed to pull the ball, you're supposed to pull the ball. If you're not, you're gonna be on the bench. And there's a couple other guys who are Division One transfers who had health issues as well. But um, there's a kid from out of this Jacksonville area, Nick Troni, who was at who was who was Mr. Florida, 
when he um when he left Ponte Vedra High School, who ain't bad. So he's going to have to. That's on scholarship. So with the dynamics that happen in the locker room, typically you you got what you're invested in and what you're not invested in. So DeAndre's put himself in a situation where he has to is is going to be very humbling to where he's going to have to really work two to three times harder just to make sure he sees that field. Can he do it? Without a doubt. I think he's talented. He's got great arm strength. But it's uh, what's going to happen when you have some adversity. Because you, not only did you miss a spring, you didn't perform well the last time you were on the field, and you're still recovering from that injury, who a lot of my friends in physical therapy world were saying when he got that, that that's not a one-year recovery. That's a two-year recovery. So hopefully he gets that pop back. And I wish nothing but the best for him, even though he was the starting quarterback for 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 a god awful team. He was there at the end. Uh, that 2016 team was pretty darn good. Finished in the top 10 in the nation. Uh, beat Michigan in the Orange Bowl, and DeAndre Francois delivered a win. Uh, yeah, that cap it off. Uh, what 33 32? Really good game uh, against the Wolverines. I'm still trying to get over that. Whew. Still trying to get over that. Well, still, still trying to get my heart back in order after that one. Okay. That was, All right. Uh, yeah, Nooney Murray bailed you out. Jeez. I mean, Got the Florida State uh, football talk uh, coming your way every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please lock it in. If you love Florida State, uh, you got to join these gentlemen across the board right here. James Coleman, fifth quarter college football, Jason Parker, Chop Chat, and Logan Robinson with Noel Game Day. So Willie Taggart's got a five and seven season under his belt. Yeah, I'm going to mention it one more time. Um, Come, on, Come on, Mark. It's, it's just unfathomable to me. And I make this comment to James all the time. When I look through, so I probably watch – uh, on any major power, even when they're having a seven loss season, I'm watching seven or eight of those 12 games and they played two decent games. They, they manhandled a, a decent wake forest team that won a bowl game. They beat them by like 21 points and they barely slipped by Boston college. You know, they played an atrocious game against Louisville. They got hammered by Virginia tech on down the line, Syracuse teams that they shouldn't have gotten hammered against. It, and it just looked like they were just in disarray. Uh, couldn't line up right, just just couldn't get it together on offense. And that's the coach's calling card. So there's always going to be major pressure to win at Florida State. But they come out week one, and they're not facing uh, a Bethune-Cookman or a FAMU or somebody like that. It's uh, Boise State, which they will have a talent advantage but how big does this game become? Uh, Logan, we'll start with you, more so than a typical Florida State opener, possibly. I think it's it's a big importance to see what kind of hard work has been put in together from Taggart and company uh, whenever they show up on the field, uh, when they run out of the tunnel and how they're acting, how, how – sure they are as a team and how composed they are. I want to see how organized everything is on the sideline because it was all in a disarray last year. I think that was a huge problem. Um, and, and it's going to be interesting also because Kendall Browse likes to run his offense uh, pretty dadgum fast. Uh, he's had a record, though, when his first years uh, as offensive coordinator. They're pretty impressive and solid. Uh, so right off the bat against Boise State, uh, you're going to be instantly looking at the offensive side of things. I think you'll see a little bit more of a CEO uh, route for Taggart this year more than anything. We saw that uh, hints of that during the spring, which I, I'm interested to see how that works uh, in his favor. I think he's going to give a lot of the reins, as he said, to Kendall Bryles um, and also, with having a, a big leader out on that field, if James Blackman, which I do believe and I think a lot of us do, will be the starter in 2019, uh, to see what a leader on the field does for that kind of offensive line for a guy that would bleed for him and do anything. I think that plays a vital role uh, in how that offensive line will work in Randy Clements' first year as offensive line coach. So um, if, if you're going into the going to the Boise State game, I, I, I I think a lot of fans want to see, of course, you know, you want to see touchdowns and all that, but you, you'd like to see a little bit more of some organization and the way that they're shifting players out and the penalties and all that kind of mess kind of be uh, 
fixed in a lot of ways. And that start that started months ago uh, when spring was going on. And I think this is only going to continue, of course, during uh, the summer and, and fall camp whenever they're doing going through strength and conditioning. Mark, yeah, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me jump in there real quick because I'm going to say two things. Number one, yes, you know, and I've been the first person to admit last year we were not a good team. But let's also give Florida State some credit about one thing. Florida State was a blown, horrible call by officials away from being a 6-6 six and six bowl eligible team. It was the Miami game. It was a the the horrible call. Florida State would have been up two scores. Florida State would have won that game. They would have been six and six, and they would have been bowl eligible. So, so right there. So, I guess there's one thing we have to look at: was was this the best interest of the program? I'm, you know, I don't want to stop losing seasons ever, but was this maybe the best thing? You know, was it good to continuously go six and six? You know, seven and five, six and six. It's also being down here in South Florida where you hear with the Dolphins all the time when they go 3-13 and 13, and all you hear is, oh, well, 1972, we went undefeated. I mean, great. Congratulations. We were going 7-5, and 6-6. Six and six. Maybe the losing season was the best thing. If it's one losing season and now we're going to have another 40-plus years of winning seasons, I'll take that. Now, as far as the Boise State game goes, moving on to 2019 real quick, I'm gonna here's your hot take right now. This is the most important opener for FSU football – and this one's for James since 2005 against Miami. We won that game. Yeah, I see. I see James's eyes light up there on that one. He remembers <laughs> that one. He remembers that one big time. But this one yeah. is the most. This one is the most important game since then because if Florida State goes out and wins this game, you look at it. There's a legitimate argument when you look at the schedule and you when you look at the quality on this team. There's a legitimate argument that FSU could be five and zero heading into that Clemson game. It could be a battle of undefeateds if FSU beats Boise State. If FSU loses to Boise State, I'll say it, all hell is going to break loose on Willie Taggart, on FSU football, on, on Florida State University as a whole right now because the, the view is nothing will have changed from 2018. So that's why this is the most important opener in a decade and a half for FSU football. And what are, what are the odds they win that game? I say about 60-40. 55-45. I, I mean, they're, be a they're, about, they're about a four-and-a-half-point favorite right now. I'd say if the game was played right now, I'd say Florida State wins by a touchdown if the game is right now. That's um, that's a lot of respect for Boise State with a, a team that doesn't know who their starting quarterback is going to be that lost their defensive coordinator and a ton of talent. Um, I mean, I think you have to take all things into consideration. I mean, they are in a duck, but at the same time, this isn't playing Miami. I agree it is very important. It's more important for us as a fan base. Um, I think we are a, a fan base doing this stuff with the fifth quarter, and I'm sure Logan and, uh, and, and you guys can – y'all been doing this a lot longer. I found out how how invested our fan base is, maybe over-invested. Um, we criticize and, we, and we, over, we, we look at way too many things. It was a bad year. Um. Oh, I think we might have lost James. James, come on back when you can. All right. Uh, and, and I want to remind you guys that we got two other things working here. Number one is that if I don't bring something up that you guys want to hit on, just start talking about it. Number mm -hmm. two, uh, I think, Logan, you said you might uh, have been able to access the live chat. So if you guys see any uh, comments or questions in the live chat and you'd like to capitalize on those and answer those, certainly I'm monitoring as well. But uh I miss a ton. So if there's anything that uh, anyone has to say, and uh, I think, you guys I think get used to my live chats because they'll be talking about USC and Texas and Ohio State and everything else as well. So it's not necessarily just Florida State fans. Uh, they talk about whatever they want. And, and I got to figure out how to get. Logan. I got to figure out how to get. Logan. I think I think I think James is trying to mute his mic and try to hide from me because I can't hear him, but. Uh, I think he's trying to hide and talking all that mess because I can't even hear what he's saying, but I'm sure it's something silly because he's been smiling <laughs> the whole time in his car. <laughs> so, guys, one of my favorite off-season questions, and I've hit you guys with it, I think, each, but now that I've got you all together, is basically I always like to stay on top of that next uh, personnel wave. I want to know these impact players that are coming that we didn't necessarily see last year that maybe we saw on special teams or we saw 
fill in here and there. But uh, now they, they're counted on, and, and you're pretty excited to see them uh, jump on the field and stay on the field and make impact plays. So, uh, Logan, I'll start with you in regards to some guys that we may not necessarily know about right this second, but uh, about the third quarter of the Boise State game, we may be like, oh, that, that guy can play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if he's going to have an initial impact in the Boise State game, but I would keep an eye on Dante Lucas, and an offensive lineman coming in. Uh, I've heard some good things about him uh, already being a vocal guy, which in my opinion I think is huge. A lot of 2013 guys had the same uh, situation with them, that same kind of personality. But Dante Lucas on the offensive line side, I think anybody uh, – here or anybody hearing about excitement for an offensive lineman, I think FSU fans get out of their seats, but uh, I would keep an eye on Lucas. Uh, another guy that had a pretty nice year for a young guy is Asante Samuel, a cornerback uh, for Florida state. Uh, when I went to the spring practices, he was extremely vocal trash talker. Uh, and he also had a solid uh, spring too. And I thought he had a pretty decent as a true guy, as a, as a true freshman last year, I think had a, had a pretty uh, solid season last year. There were some hiccups and you could definitely tell there were some assignments missed, but going into a second year, uh, I think you see uh, a lot more uh, like going off of his assignments better. Uh, playbook will be uh, smarter in that regard and his mentality. Uh, those kind those two guys, there's also a few more, there's quite a few you can name, but Akeem Dent is just one of those, your next uh, top DB at Florida State. And he, he kind of comes in as a tandem with Travis Jay out of Madison County, state champion, um, hard hitter, uh, athletic freak, also plays basketball, talking about Travis Jay. Um, I think Travis Jay is going to have a potential to have an impact on the defense uh, a few times during this season, and of course with Akeem Akeem Dent. So, uh, and everybody knows his name, but if we're talking about impact and somebody that uh, at least nationwide might not hear about him, I think uh, DJ Matthews uh, is going to have a pretty pretty interesting season because that's probably, in my opinion, after the spring, is Blackman's favorite target, uh, and I think his name is going to be uh, out there quite a bit. Uh, he's a he's a special. Sp- a uh, route runner, hard to tackle, small little dude. Uh, and from what I saw throughout the spring, Blackman connected well with DJ Matthews. So th- those kind of names ring out to me and what you might see uh, in Boise State. And we'll get hints of it during fall camp, definitely with Dante Lucas fighting to uh, get a starting job because he's he's been vocal, he's a leader, and he's also told some uh, told a guy that's been there for a while to, to leave if you're not about it. So. Yeah, those would probably be mine. What say you, Jason? Well, first of all, I want to I want to ask Logan how much did you get? Uh, how much did Natty Light pay to sponsor you there on the wall? I love that in the corner. Logan, can you Logan. hear us? I think he can only hear me. I think he can't. Oh, yeah. He can't hear you or James. Got it. Yeah, I couldn't hear. I couldn't. Message. What do you got, Jason? No, I was just wondering because I, I figure out my wall here. I need some sponsorship. I noticed he's got the the Natty Light thing back there. I'm just trying to figure out how much they uh they paid for it. I get it on my wall back here. The Natty Light sponsorship. He's impressed with that, Logan. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Still, still in college, still in college. Um, we're still we got a long ways to go over here, but uh, maybe there could be a sponsorship from Natural Ice coming soon. We never know. I like it. I like that. There. Um, touching base with, with you, Mark, on the recruiting uh, trail and on, the, on names you haven't heard. The two names I was going to say, both Logan said them both. Uh, Dante Lucas, I think, does start against Boise State. I think he has come in, you know, like we've talked about, I think he's coming with the right attitude, the right motivation. I think his talent will get him in the starting lineup. And uh, Keem Dan, I watched him play down here in South Florida. You watched that spring game, and you watched the first couple drives that he was in there. He, there were people in the stands there who were just, you were basically saying, who the hell is this guy who's just come here? And he was dominating. He was looking like somebody who's been there two years, three years, and is, is, is ready to continue that DBU legacy with FSU. So I think both of them, I believe they will both start the opener. If not, if not then they will be playing a heck of a lot 
on on August 31st against the Broncos. I, I legitimately can see them both playing early and often. And if they live up to expectations, spending a lot of time in the starting lineup in 2019. All right, guys, let me do a little house cleaning right here. Uh, this is a tradition, has become a tradition here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So I see uh, Captain Trips. I've never seen that handle in the live chat. There's a few others. Uh, that is the one that caught my eye. Joshua Tall. I've never seen that uh, um, handle in the live chat as well. And there might be a few others. Kelly Hoffney, Hoffheins. Yeah, so you may want to cover your ears real quick, but this is a tradition. Welcome to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Would love to know who you root for. I'm guessing Florida State, but we've got a lot of uh, fans from other teams on the line. So let us know who you root for and how long you've been watching. So we appreciate you uh, joining the live chat. Uh, again, it's Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We're here each and every day with the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry, and also some analysis from myself. We're actually, right now, Jason and Logan, I'm ranking all the schedules in the Power Five. I do this every offseason. I rank them all, 70 all the way up to number one. I have yet to reach Florida State. I'm at number 40. Usually the, uh, the Knowles have a monster of a schedule uh, including of course the florida game and then they if they pick up another difficult non-conference game like they did against boise state but considering the state of the acc uh based on what i saw last year uh, the schedule is not going to rank quite as high as it typically would and we certainly have a number of uh, shows leading up to september or technically august 31st uh, that we can run through the florida state schedule in future weeks uh, i want to remind everyone that uh, you can join the college football, the voice of college football community over on Patreon. Please join us there. I bring you two exclusive live streams each and every week. One is my reaction to your viewer comments. So thank you so much for the viewer comments. Just to give you some perspective on this, at this point last year, we had received about 6,000 comments to the channel. Right now, we're over 36,000 comments to the channel this year. So thank you so much for that. And I will be responding to those viewer comments. So look out because I'm certainly going to applaud and and um, and uh, applaud, yes, those great insightful comments. But look out if you're illogical. If you don't have your facts straight, I will uh, lay the hammer down. And then we also have an exclusive live stream each and every week where uh, we will bring on you, the fan, as a roundtable talking college football. So it's 11 a.m. this Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, where we bring on you, the fan, for the first time on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, our community on Patreon. So please sign up there. And again, you can help us build the channel by grabbing the Amazon link in the description section below and doing your regular shopping right there. All right. Uh, have you guys uh, teased the fan base with uh, any kind of a prediction thus far? Well, we'll send out the official predictions, of course, near the end of August. That's at least my deal. I I cannot predict records, uh, but I had so many people as I did this scheduling series say, you got to give us a record projection. So I tacked it on, but I disclaimed it by saying, this is my, this is my spring projection. Don't hold me to it. But uh, right now, are you guys ultra optimistic like this is going to be a big turnaround or you just want to see okay this is a this is a fringe top 25 team this year this is not the five and seven we saw last year but this is not vintage we're back florida state eight and four range what do you say logan i like the eight and four range that's what i've been saying for a while now on our podcast here the spear and our instagram lives uh, i've I think an eight and four season is huge for Florida state. That's a really optimistic uh, thought. And I'm as a person, I try to stay optimistic, but it, it seems, it seems real. I mean, I, I, you start off with Boise state. I think that's def that's by far a home game for Florida state. I think Florida state's already sold over 30,000 or 35,000 tickets there. I think Florida state takes advantage of that tonight game. That'll be a home game in Jacksonville. They'll play uh, Louisiana Monroe at five at home. You go to Virginia. Um, and that, that, I think that's one's going to be a pretty interesting problem, in my opinion. Uh, and I'd kind of go 50-50 on that one as a, as a prediction-wise ahead of the season. 
Um, I'm, I can't, I don't want to say it now, but I think that's going to be a tough, tough game. That's at seven 30 at night uh, for Florida state on prime time. So, and then Louisville, I don't think Florida state will have a problem with uh, NC state comes to Florida state this year. So I don't think there's too much with it. I think Florida state uh, dismantles Clemson and death Valley. I don't think that one will be even close. Yeah, let, me, let me write that uh, down. I'm just kidding. I don't want to have the chat destroy me and say never have me on here again, but uh I think oh, that you take that as a loss. Well. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think, you, of course, that's that's just not even a, not even funny. But uh, Florida State will have a rough time in Death Valley. I think um, what Dabo is doing there is kind of ridiculous at this point. But uh, and then Florida State will play Wake Forest. Then they'll play against Syracuse. I think Miami will be a pretty interesting one. I think I thought they should have beat them last year, but we were all wrong about that. Uh, and then they'll face Boston College, uh, and then Alabama State and Florida. So I, I've got an eight and four uh, prediction right now, uh, and I think this depends a lot on how that offensive line plays. And I've mentioned it before. I think one of the biggest, probably the biggest for me, is Randy Clements as being an offensive line coach. Um, a lot of this depends because you have a gunslinger in the pocket with James Blackman likes to throw it deep and all of that, uh, and there's a lot of talent at the wide receiver position, and it just, it's, I think this is going to rely a lot on the offensive side of things, so eight and four. Hey, Jason, before you dive in on this one, uh, before it slips my mind, uh, something Logan said triggers a really good topic for future weeks. This is way, way too in-depth to dig in with about eight to ten minutes left in our, our show here. So obviously... Florida State won a national championship in 2013. They're an undefeated team in 2014. They get back to the college football playoffs. 2015, they're good. 2016, they're still good. They win an Orange Bowl, finish in the top 10. Uh, As soon as Logan made the comment, what Dabo's doing at Clemson is ridiculous, I would love – so I went through recruiting rankings. I went through records. I I basically set up a video where I talked about the tip of how that – balance of power tipped and then just swung all of a sudden because if you remember those Clemson teams were really good in 2011 12 and 13 but man Florida State would just lay the hammer on them I remember in particular that 2013 game uh Florida State just annihilated a really good Clemson team that won the Orange Bowl beat Ohio State but man it was like a 51 to 14 game uh there was no comparison between the programs at that point and it just swung That's a great topic in terms of what happened around 2014, 15, 16 in that range. Let's let's also remember this one thing, though, and I'll say this. Yes, even Clemson in 2016 won the national title, beat Florida State by, I believe, it was three points. I believe 37-34 was the final in that one, or 38-35, one or the other. The 2017 year, we had to reschedule a game just to become bowl eligible. It was 17-14 Clemson in the fourth quarter with five minutes to go. So last year was the first time that Clemson actually took FSU to the woodshed. And if I remember correctly, Jason, Blackman threw a pick with about five minutes left in that game. They were driving about the Clemson 40. After FSU FSU forced a turnover. So FSU had the ball and was in range to drive down for a field goal, tie the game. Who knows what happens there? But but we yeah we can talk about that to, in the future. To your point, when the teams have gone head to head, excluding last season, yeah, Florida State's been in the game. They rose up. They played that day. But Clemson hasn't been messing around with the likes of uh, North Carolina and Georgia Tech like Florida State has the last three or four years. So well, week to okay. week, Clemson has been the much better program. Obviously, well, they are on a four game winning streak, and they're Clemson. They are the best team in college football right now, fifteen and zero, defending champions. I'm just saying, last year was the first year where they actually owned the series. So, and I can get all the Clemson hate mail. That's not hating on Clemson. I think Clemson beats us this year. To to go back to the record question for this year, I would say right now, if God came down and said, hey, FSU will finish 9-3 and this year, I would take it in a heartbeat. 9-3, and done. I think it's a legitimate thing. I think on paper right now, I think we lose to Clemson. I think Florida – is a favorite over us. But once again, this is the same Florida team that has lost some guys from last year's team. You know, it's an interesting thing. 
there are, I mean, and Logan can attest to this too, as being an FSU student right now. There's been times where, where FSU was supposed to get killed by Florida and we've gone out and beat them and vice versa. So right now, that's a, that's a you never know situation. I think right now, I think we lose to Clemson. I think if, this, if we're going by right now, I think we lose to Clemson. I think we lose to Florida. I think we give up another one or two games. So right now, I would say eight and four, nine and three. If you read us in August, I'll figure out some way to make us 11 and one. I'll figure out some way to do that. But I think right now I'd say eight and four, nine and three. Let's take it right now. Absolutely. Now, of course, for some people, it uh, depends how you slice that eight and four or nine and three. Here's a ridiculous nine and three that won't happen, but you lose to Boise State, you lose to Florida, you lose one conference game, but you beat Clemson head to head, you win the ACC. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Eight and four, nine and three uh, would seem to be a significant upgrade from what we saw last year against a not a good conference, but obviously you're playing the best program in the country right now. And you're playing a glut of the rest of the division is capable. There are no Illinois in that division. There are no Rutgers in that division. So even though the ACC is not at its best right now, the collection of Wake Forest, BC, NC State and Syracuse is certainly capable. Uh, and Louisville was obviously awful last year, but Scott Satterfield uh, could bring them back to some level of respectability this year. Another line of questioning for you two in future weeks. This should be a whole lot of fun. Listen to these questions. All right. You can you can set up your frame of reference, whether, whether you want to go all time back to 1912 or you want to go within your lifetime or your span of covering FSU football, whatever your frame of reference. Okay, question number one. Not necessarily the biggest wins, but to you, what are the most exhilarating wins that still stay with you, still put a smile on your face? And whether that once you want that to be one game you're gonna list, or you can go a top three, a top five, I'll leave it up to you. But most exhilarating wins during your frame of reference on Florida State football history. Question number two, flip side, most excruciating, crushing losses that still haunt you, Florida State football history. Again, your frame of reference. Question number three, favorite all-time player. Question number four, greatest all-time player. Again, you can go your frame of reference. You don't have to go back to Fred Bolitnikoff if you don't want to. Um, then we move into our changes category if you could change one thing about florida State football, what would you change i'll send these in the twitter chat you we'll, we'll have it all lined up jason uh so number one you are the athletic director or the president of florida state and you run the football program what would you change and i'll even let you go back in time if you want to change a uh a blown call, if you want to change a coaching hire, something like that, we can do that as well. Number two, what would you change about ACC football? Oh. <laughs> oh. And then question number three, on the national scale, what would you change about college football nationally? And we'll save that to run of questions for a future week as well. 2013, Miami. 2013 Miami was the most, the greatest game greatest game i'll tell you that right now okay there's a bit of a tease a bit of a preview from jason we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it next good week stuff. good stuff all right parting shots for the week anything else you guys want to leave us with logan um i was going to note on a few things that happened uh just with and incoming guys uh, a couple transfers got their jersey numbers and their weights uh, few of the key guys, like with Sean Fuller, true freshman coming in defensive end. Uh, he's going to wear number 30. And he come, he's coming in at 6'3", 275. Uh, Ryan Roberts, which who is a transfer offensive lineman from NIU, he's going to wear number 56. 6'6", six six, 305 pounds is what they listed him as. And he's a true senior, of course. And then the two quarterbacks coming in, transfer guys, uh, Alex Hornibrook, as we know, uh, is, is from Wisconsin. He's going to wear number 12, which uh, DeAndre Francois, of course, wore during his time at Florida State. He's sitting at six foot four, 220, and he's a true senior. And then also Wyatt Rector, he's going to wear number 19. A.J. Westbrook wore that number on defense last year. 
he's sitting at six foot two, 225 pounds. Uh, so he weighs about five more pounds than, uh, than Hornybrook, which is pretty interesting to me, but Hornybrook's got about two more inches on him. So that, I was just going to highlight that. And that was pretty much all I was going to say. Nothing too special. Logan, let uh, people know where they can find you. Uh, you can find us nolgameday.com. You can also find our podcast. We have weekly guests. Uh, this week we'll have Bryant McFadden on, BMAC, former Noel, two time Super Bowl champion on this week. We had nice. Tanksman on last week. Uh, but that's Hear the Spear, but nolgameday.com and Hear the Spear. It's on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play. What you got there, Jason? Where can we find yeah. you? And parting seven. shots. You can find me. All right, party shots real quick. 247sports.com ranked their most hated teams of all time, and they put 2014 FSU at number three on the list. What the heck is that about? Seriously. Because that's nobody wanted to see them in the playoff, but I, that's – Hang on. Let, 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 let me finish. That's revisionist wow. history. I was certainly a guy that said, I don't believe they're one of the four best teams in the country, but they earned the spot. They're undefeated. They won a conference championship. They should be there. And I'm not one that says, well, they won the national championship last year. We should we should give them the the invite. I, I base it on the record and the performance for that particular season. And I don't care if they would have gone out and won every game three to two. They won them all, so they earned the spot. But in retrospect, then people can then – be revisionist history buffs and say, oh, well, then they got blown out by Oregon, which they also forget that it was a one score game deep into the third quarter. It wasn't as much of a blowout as the final score would indicate. Uh, and then they want to say, OK, well, they shouldn't have been in the playoff. Right. Oh, no, I agree. with you. 100%. That's where that comes from. I saw that was very passionate. You know, Mark. I appreciate that. Uh, also, real <laughs> quick, FSU baseball. Let's give a shout out. Mike Martin. OK. In career, I'm going to call it right now. They make it to Super Regionals next weekend. Let's give FSU baseball some love. But you can follow us on shopchat.com. We will have all your information. We will actually be sitting down with Willie Taggart. He's in South Florida on Friday. We will be sitting down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. And you can read about that this weekend on shopchat.com. Very, very cool. Uh, I certainly trump your two get your your last two guests that they both mentioned with McFadden. And with Taggart are very impressive, but I trumped it obviously with Logan Robinson and Jason Parker. Oh, but, so, uh, so <laughs> well, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So here's the deal. If you're joining us for the first time, or maybe you've caught a few videos, lock it in. We'll get you set for 2019 with Florida state and the rest of the nation here. So uh, please lock it in, share the videos, comment, like subscribe, do all those good things to help us build the channel. And please, Join our The Voice of College Football community over on a Patreon. You will not be disappointed, I promise. So first edition, boys, uh, I appreciate you guys committing to this. Uh, as we talked about before we started to record, you guys are welcome each and every week. Understand that you have lives, so you may not be able to make it each and every time. But uh, certainly this is going to be a good time talking Florida State football, and we really think that uh, between the three of us and a few others, that uh, we can build something special right here each and every week. Thank you for having us, Mark. Most definitely, and and hopefully we'll be able to have Coleman on next uh, next week. We'll try to get him out of a car this time. I don't think I've ever spoken to him before outside of a car, so oh, hopefully we'll yeah. get him. I hope we'll actually know room. that you get the same treatment that I get. From <laughs> oh, it's continuing. Only, <laughs> only time, only to time I've spoken with them was when after a practice and in, in person. But otherwise, always in the car. He really scared me for a second. I thought he was driving for one moment. I was like, what the heck's going oh, on? Oh, he drives and talks at the same time. Oh, I know. Time. He, he but it scared too. me for a yeah. moment. Special heck? talent. Uh, the, the one time he jumped on with me, he actually had his laptop, and he actually had a suit and tie on. He he didn't. He kind of looked out of place, and I said, right. James, you cannot be dressing for, for Mark Rogers TV. I know that. And, yeah, he was just coming back from one of his uh, local Jacksonville TV spots. Got it. What a man. Hard worker. All right. Would like to invite everyone who's still on the live chat. We've got about 41 on right now. We had 58. Uh, if you know of Florida State football fans, family, friends, social media acquaintances, let them know. We're right here at 7 o'clock Eastern time every Wednesday night. Bring your comments. Bring your questions to the best live chat room in college football. Guys, again, Jason, Logan, we appreciate it so much. It was a great first edition, and we will see you next week. See you next week. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.
And I would like to let everyone know that uh, we'll be back here at 8 o'clock, a different link. So this is just five minutes from right now with some Miami football talk with Cam Underwood from State of the U. And then at 9 o'clock Eastern time, we've got a trio of Ohio State bloggers, broadcasters, and writers to talk Ohio State football at 9 o'clock Eastern time. So we will see all of you in just a few.